clearly, I'm here today to say that this defined benefit pension system is not sustainable. You can't promise people you're going to do something for them and then rename. But you cannot promise the new crop a utopia either. Pension reform equals property tax relief is exactly that. It's not going to be relief right away, but it's a start. Our taxes are killing us. And we can't raise enough taxes in order to meet that, that additional cost, which is going to result in cutting teachers and cutting programs, which is going to negatively impact our students. There's uh, a terrific opportunity for folks to, to say, we need to fix this. There is a direct line between pension reform and property tax savings. Hi, I'm Governor Tom Corbett. Members of the state legislature are back to work here in Harrisburg after their summer recess. I spent a lot of time this summer at meetings across the state talking with families, hardworking Pennsylvanians, about one of the most pressing issues facing this Commonwealth, our pension crisis, and its impact on your property taxes. Pennsylvania's two public pension systems are underfunded by $50 billion and growing. It's a problem more than 20 years in the making, but the day of reckoning is here. These pensions are a promise Pennsylvania made to the workers in our schools, courts, legislature, and throughout state government. We must keep this promise. The cost, however, is staggering. 63 cents, nearly two-thirds of every dollar of new revenue that comes into the state now goes directly to pension payments. Not to help our most vulnerable residents, not to classrooms, not to job creating programs. $610 million more every year just to pay our legacy pension obligations. Clearly, we cannot sustain this system. And make no mistake, it has a direct effect on property taxes. School districts rely primarily on the property tax to fund their operations. Statewide, pension costs in school districts combined have jumped nearly $2 billion in the last 10 years. That's more than 280%. The result? Skyrocketing property taxes, and for some districts, imminent bankruptcy. Something has to be done. Or what's going to happen is we're going to turn all our keys into Harrisburg and say, okay, here you go, here's our school. See what you can do with it because we're on a path of state takeover. I want to share with you more of the comments I heard at our meetings this summer, and then discuss how you can help solve this crisis. I went into shock third year in a row at the huge increases that we're getting. I called the assessor's office thinking that there was a mistake. When I told her what my millage had gone from and to in three years, even she was shocked. We went to referendum in Southern Columbia and failed by almost a 12 to 1 margin. Okay. So referendums, you know, that's just no good. Uh, we got the pension exception. But even with the pension exception, we were $126,000 short. I would say in about three to four years, we're going to be bankrupt. Just because of the increases in the uh, pension and the increases in insurance. Instead of hiring you know, 12 or 13 people each year, we're not hiring anyone. And we're losing a generation of talented educators because there's just no money. There's 12 pages of sheriff sales in the Pocono record that are largely the result of people walking away from the debt that they have, largely because of tax. When it comes to the ability to buy a home, the issue for us is not the lack of income or a poor credit score or even a substantial down payment. The issue is the annual property tax bill. We're the next generation to take over this farm, and we have seven grandkids that have interest to take over the farm, hopefully someday, too. Property taxes have tripled for my dad in the last 20 years that he's owned this property, so. That's kind of the perspective I'm going through of what you do affects me. In the 2011 school year, if I hired a new teacher at a salary of $43,000, uh, we had to also budget a retirement cost of $2,458 for that teacher. We're at a 21.4% teacher's contribution. So that same teacher salary at $43,000, we're now um, to need to budget $9,327 a month pension just for that teacher. So that's just shy of a $6,000 increase um, in five years for us to hire a new teacher. 
you're definitely, in my mind, in real crisis mode. Everybody in this room knows that pre-K education is very important. Iroquois School District cannot add that program because we don't have the money. And instead, we're sending that money in to fix the pension hole. I started out far lower than other people in other professions. But there was a promise at the end that after 35 years, when I retired, that there would be a pension available. And it would be one that was not huge. It doesn't make me a millionaire but it would provide for a decent living after I retire. We are trying to preserve that promise. In the discussions that we are having, we do not want to take away anything that you have earned, but the sustainability of this plan is in jeopardy. We cannot afford to even take monies out of our savings because we are afraid that we may not have it when it's time for us my wife and I, to go into these assisted living, which is very possible. So it's affecting you on your fixed income. It's affecting your decisions as to, you know, going into an assisted living or not, how you're going to pay for it. We don't want to overtax our residents. We mm -hmm. want to be mindful. People on fixed income, people who have lost their jobs, people who have taken cuts in pay. How do you pay $21,000, uh, $25,000 a year in taxes, of which about seventeen is school taxes? My pension, I have to tell you, since I've been retired, has been reduced three times in the last 11 years. And now I have to manage to pay someone else's pension when my own has been decreased three times. This is not fair. If we had a, an overhead expense like you're describing in our farm that was eating into our operating money that we can use to manage our business, we would know three, four years from now we're going to be out of business. We couldn't, we couldn't sustain that. They would put us on it, and no matter how profitable. That is the word, is sustain, sustainability. It's not, without increasing taxes, property taxes and, and personal taxes and business taxes, this system's unsustainable. So Governor Corbett, I hope for the sake of my family, my farm, and all the other businesses and homeowners across the state, you can convince our legislature to stop giving away the farm. <laughs> it has been proven many times, government cannot be all things to all people. Absolutely. Bill Hoover is right. Government cannot be all things to all people, but government must ensure that Pennsylvania is on sound fiscal ground. To do that, we must reform our state pension system. I support a plan named after the two state representatives proposing it, Mike Tobash and Warren Kampf. It makes no changes in pensions for retired and current state employees. Those pension benefits remain fully guaranteed by the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. It only changes benefits for new employees. Salary earned up to $50,000 would remain under the current defined benefit system guaranteed by the state. Any salary earned over $50,000 would go into a defined contribution system, similar to the 401k plans offered by many private sector employers. This change could save state taxpayers 11 to $15 billion over the next 30 years. Enacting the Tobash Camp Plan is a first but vital step on the road to reform and fiscal stability. Here's my call to action for every Pennsylvania taxpayer. Please email, call, write, or use social media to contact your state legislators, both Republicans and Democrats, in the State Senate and the State House. They need to hear from you. Continue this conversation on social media. You can tweet or post your thoughts to my sites and share this video with your friends and family on your social networks. We must reform pensions now to ensure that our children and grandchildren have a secure financial future in Pennsylvania. Thank you.